As an NVIDIA graphics card user, finding a reliable, stable, and functional game capture software is not actually as simple as you might think. Screen capture is usually okay, but fast and reliable hooking into DirectX or OpenGL or similar is not so easy. Shadow Play from NVIDIA is known for its stability and speed, and it bloody well should be because it has full unrestricted access to the hardware. But in my opinion, it's limited in almost every other way with virtually no advanced functionality, a horrible user interface, and more recently, the most annoying thing of all is the need for a login. Basically, Shadow Play is not for me. So that's where Marillis Action Game Capture software comes in. It sits itself alongside other big names like OBS, Bandicam, DXTory, to name but a few. I actually admire developers who get into this field. Gamers are notoriously a tough crowd of largely tech-savvy enthusiasts who demand top quality products and excellent support. This same crowd, by the very nature of custom gaming PC rigs all have different hardware. A different choice of memory here and a different overclock there, and you're essentially supporting a completely different product. Let's face it, this certainly isn't the Mac world, and that's probably a good thing, otherwise we'd be stuck with games running at 12 frames a second or something, unless you're willing to pay in excess of £10,000 for the computer itself. So, although only a small company based in Poland, Marillis, who write this software here, the Action Software, have been in business since 2009 and began its product portfolio with a Splash Media Player, which is now up to version 2.04. The Action Game Capture Software, which is this, is up to 2.510 at the time of recording. I bought this, as you probably just saw there, it's licensed to me, and I can review the full product. If you want to try it, they do offer a watermarked free trial, which is fine for this type of product. It's pretty normal to have a watermark on uh, any free trial when you're talking about game capture. So let's look at the good and the bad, and I do hope the team at Marillis see this video at some point and take on board my comments around the bad. Firstly, the good points. This software does a lot. It's a small, neat package that has a lot of features. Let's quickly go through the interface and see what this does. Firstly, it does DirectX and OpenGL application capture, so that can either be full screen or a window. It does an active screen, which would be the full screen. It does a just a sort of section of your desktop, and it does devices such as this. So in my case, I've got this set to the uh, output of DXTory, uh, but I can also set that to my uh, Elgato game capture hardware, and it actually nicely supports the full 64-bit drivers of that Elgato hardware, which is a change because most of them are only limited to this Elgato helper device, which is annoying. You can record using uh, NVENC or NVENC or whatever that is, uh, the hardware-based encoding, and you can record that to MP4, or you can do it to AVI at varying frame rates up to 120 frames a second. So I think that's going to cater for most people's requirements. I mean, are many people are capturing games at more than 120 frames a second? I doubt that. You've got microphone inputs that can be set to either always record, or you can have a kind of push-to-talk scenario, which might be helpful in uh, live streaming or somewhere where you don't always want everything to be output like recording something like this where you do. Webcam is supported as well and it does full live stream which is essential these days. It does it very nicely and very simply but it does support a large number of services. So you've got full uh, standard kind of YouTube, Twitch, uh, Ustream and they've added Smashcast recently so uh, pretty good selection there of live streaming. It has a separate audio recorder which is kind of a bit unusual so you can record stuff out to WAV, you can run this alongside the game capture software and output a separate actual WAV file to some to somewhere different which is which is nice. Uh, a completely separate and independent audio recorder so you don't have to just do screen capture you can just capture audio. It's a nice addition. You've got a dedicated benchmarking section, which uh, sort of pull, looks at your system specification, and you can run benchmarking on this too. Screen capture, simple but effective. PNG, bitmap, or JPEG. There we go, inside desktop or not. I mean, it's up to you. It depends what mode you're in. 
And then we have a lot of configuration here, which they try and keep simple. And that sort of leans me over to some of the bad points, which I will look at in a second. So as I say, this software does a lot. Not only that, it has some fairly unique features in my experience with other capture software. For example, this here in the webcam setup, you've got real time chroma key support for the webcam, which is not included in too many bits of software that I've seen. Uh, I mentioned earlier it has the support for the native Elgato 64-bit capture drivers, which is great. OBS does also do this, by the way, but um, but it's still nice to see in this software too. It's got a uh, small but functioning media browser where you can check what you've captured and delete stuff. The separate-only audio recorder is a nice addition. The benchmarking capabilities, just a couple of a couple of things that you don't see on every type of software of this kind. So uh, some nice, unique features there. Secondly. It's really well supported. I've looked back at their Facebook feed, uh, the Twitter feed, the forum, and they release regular updates and provide informative updates to their users. In fact, since buying this software at version 2.41, uh, which actually had a fundamental bug on my setup, making it completely unusable, they've updated it to version 2.5 on the 16th of May and 2.51 today. And this fixed the problem and has probably changed my overall review. Fast and responsive fixes, that is just what their community of users need and what they expect and want, really. Uh, number three, the team have been doing this for over five years. This product is five years in development and, as, and this kind of established name counts for a lot. Who wants to invest in software that gets updated for six months and then leaves its customers for dead? Their website's up to date and looks very professional. It just sort of inspires confidence. Admittedly, though, a website that looks nice is not really that hard to achieve these days. Number four, it works. It's kind of critical, really. The software works. But, well, on the whole, it does. And I'll, again, get into a bit more detail on that when I go to the bad points. It's beautifully designed. That's number five. Look at this. I mean, it's, it's a wonderful sort of simple simple and clean piece of software even if you look at the effort that's been made i mean just well let me find the section where i actually specify where my stuff is captured i say it's simple i can't find that now but um let me just let me just go to that there we go like look right they've even done a completely different version of these um folders for windows i mean most software jumps immediately back to the kind of standard windows explorer interface but they've done a different version of it they've just done a sort of skinned version of it which you know looks nice it's not over the top it's not a ridiculous skin it's just a nice skin so yeah very nicely designed okay there we go i mean that's in a nutshell what action's about and that's uh, what it does and they are, they are the good points as far as I'm concerned but let's look at the bad points overall I can't really say this software is fundamentally bad in any way before the release of version 2.50 I might have had a different opinion but in general it's solid the video capture is blazingly fast and for me at least it's been reliable since 2.5 however there are some things that bug me and really let down this software, largely around audio actually. Firstly, where are the audio meters? Action has a number of different ways to configure the audio. I was talking here about this dedicated audio recording section and then we've got our microphone here on, on this section and then in the settings we have um, uh, system sounds, uh, multi-channel audio recording but then we've also got our two separate mi microphone recording sections. But where are the audio meters? I, I just want a meter telling me that some audio is coming in. Uh, or, it, this absolutely needs to be added. Have I missed it somewhere? Or is this just a massive oversight? Where are the audio meters? That is a really big deal for me. Uh, but I can't see them in here. So I've got absolutely no way of checking that anything's working or any audio is going to be captured until I've done it. Secondly, let's go to our 
audio balance settings. We have a, um, a setting for system sounds and we have a setting for microphone. How you use this will vary depending on your setup, but they have this idea that these two volumes need to be linked. If you look at this here, so I lowered, I increased the system sound and look at my microphone, it's dropping. So I can have the two at 50-50, but then of course both are at a lower level. If I put system sounds up to 100%, my microphone's at zero. And if my microphone is at... But, it, it's just silly. I mean, I see what they were trying to do here because audio levels as a whole are not actually that obvious to master. And you see, do see loads of videos out there with a narrator that's impossible to hear because of another soundtrack. But please give us the option to unlink these two. They don't need to be linked. I, I might want to have both on full or just... Th these, these two need to be taken apart. There's no point to this at all that I can, that I can see. Okay, although... The software does support the hardware encoding. It's pretty limited in the number of options that I have around it. So I have a video frame rate here. Uh, obviously I can select the resolution, funnily enough. But if I go to the da, 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 here, so I can change the bit rate as a percentage. I've got video quality, which is low, normal, high, or ultra. And I have a bit rate percentage. And an input input range. Okay, so this is this is quite good that you do have a uh, broadcast safe sixteen to two three five or a zero two five five input range, but that's it. Compare this to the plethora of options in something like OBS or Bandicam, and a simple percentage quality slider and basic audio bitrate selection does seem a little bit limited. Again, the simple approach of this software is actually one of its strengths, but only when everything works perfectly. Maybe I might want to do a constant bitrate CBR capture or possibly a non-variable frame rate capture to allow full compatibility with my editor. So let's take a quick look at Bandicam. Um, if I can get it on the screen here, I'm gonna pull Bandicam in, which I also have. Now my, da -da -da -da, my settings on this, if I go to my video settings in Bandicam, not, not, you know, interface, not as nice, but here I have my frame rate, I have a bit rate, and I can go directly into my GeForce GTX settings where I can make selections around keyframe intervals, the uh, 4CC code, and whether I want it uh, CBR or VBR. And also I can do variable frame rate or constant frame rate. Uh, that's pretty much a good level. You know, it's not too complicated. There's not too much there. There's no sort of crazy stuff. Uh, that you would get in something like uh, Handbrake on advanced mode, but there's a good amount of settings, good settings in there. That would be my sort of suggestion to them, would be just add a bit to this. Doesn't have to, have to be much, just add something to this. Secondly, audio setup is incredibly confusing. I went through some of those options before. So you have your audio recorder. This is t essentially separate from everything else, so that's fine. But if I go into my settings with the same symbol here, the audio, so you have your record system sound option here, and I found that un unless I have this set on system default, I don't get an audio track in my video at all. I'm actually using a system with 15 potential WDM inputs and outputs. If you only have one, then it does simplify things somewhat. So my, you know, really I need this to be seven and eight because that's what I would bring in my game stuff on. But I have to have this set to system default. So this, this one can only record on system default. Otherwise, the track is blank in the video file. It has no audio, regardless of my microphone setting, which I set, as you can see here, is set to seven and eight. So even if I record microphone to a separate audio track, I, n I have no idea where that goes. I haven't managed to find the actual track that that outputs to. So this has to, yeah, I just, I just find the whole thing quite confusing. It, it took me like two hours of using this software to actually get some audio out of it. Really, this just needs to be neatened up. And let's just go back to Bandicam again and have a look at their settings on here. Right, we have a primary sound, sound device with a volume control, and they do have level meters, which just a tiny little level meter here, and a secondary sound device, and that's it, really. You either use them. Or you don't, you can save them to a separate WAV file, you can output them to a WAV file. That's all All it needs to be, really. This this whole kind of setup is just excessively confusing. It's, it's weird. It looks like it should be so simple, but it isn't. 
And I know I'm not alone in this because I've looked online while I was trying to find out how to do this and it, yeah, it's incredibly confusing. Screen capture, when you go to the screen capture option here, I'm not gonna click on it now because it will kind of, I don't know, it might mess up my other game capture. Screen capture immediately kills access to the other options. It just, they, this whole screen just drops away. Now, that is usually necessary. You would probably want to get rid of it and you want to minimize it, but I don't want to be forced to do that. It's just sort of a little thing that bugged me. And the help file, let's have a look, goes to a 404. For all their excellent support and their polished website and great design, this just looks a bit shabby and doesn't really... Well, it just doesn't look good at all, does it? The fact that the help... Right, I need some help. I'm going to click on this question mark to open up the... Two... Oh, right. 404 not found. Amazing. That's just... <laughs> it just <laughs> it looks really, really bad. So in summary then, will I use this? Most definitely, yes. It's just got so much potential with any required changes really just being a way uh, around the way the user interface works as opposed to fundamental flaws. They're adding new streaming services all the time. They're up to date with the explosion of live stream gaming. It just really is a, a neat solution. And the fact that they've been updating this and they've, I've, I've received two new versions since I bought this like a week ago or something is, is just fantastic. It's a wonderful piece of software. It just needs a little bit of refinement. That's all. Great piece, great game to capture software. This is Action for Marillis. Let me know in the comments what you think about this software. Have you used it? Are you looking for a good game capture software? If not, give it a try and uh, see what you think. Thanks for watching and please like the video if you enjoyed the review. Hopefully I'll catch you soon. <laughs> Bye for now.